First debuting in 1962 from the minds of Stan Lee, Steve Ditko and Larry Lieber, the mighty Thor entered the Marvel Comics universe. Based on the God of Thunder from Norse mythology, Thor was an attempt by the Marvel team to create a somewhat generic, all-powered superhero to prove they could successfully stray from their typical formula and expand their realms of possibilities. Becoming one of the most popular heroes in the Marvel lexicon, having appeared in every single single comics lineup of the Avengers, Thor strangely never had much of his own spotlight in visual media until 50 years after his inception. In this video, to celebrate his 60th birthday and the release of Thor Love and Thunder, we'll trace the inception and creation of the worthiest of heroes, looking at his history in print and appearances in extended media over the course of six decades. In this edition of Cartoon Evolution Presents Pop Culture Evolution Having fallen out of fashion for the last decade, superhero comics were revitalised by DC Comics in the early 1960s, giving their heroes popular modernised reboots and introducing the first crossover super team. In attempts to capitalise on their competitors' success, editor Stan Lee and his crew at Marvel Comics were further revolutionising the art form. Wanting to replicate the popularity of DC's Justice League of America, Lee devised the fantastic Fantastic Four, a super team featuring flesh and blood humans that Lee said audiences could personally relate to. Described as a revolution by former Marvel editor-in-chief Roy Thomas, Marvel sales exploded and the bullpen scrambled to invent new heroes from the same mould. In March 1962, they debuted The Incredible Hulk. While the first adventures of Spider-Man and Ant-Man were in the works, set to hit newsstands mere months later. Impressed with the work that they were doing together on Spider-Man, Lee teamed up with artist Jack Kirby to concurrently develop yet another character. Despite this more down-to-earth human angle seeming to work, Lee decided it was time for a risk, choosing instead to tackle a character grander and more fantastical, taking a chance to develop a comic hero like those from years gone by. Kirby asked at the time, We've got the Hulk, who's the strongest guy in the world. We have Spider-Man, who climbs walls. Who can we get that's even bigger and better and stronger? While Lee asked, How do you make someone stronger than the strongest person? His answer? Don't make him human, make him a god. Essentially, this could be Marvel's answer to DC's Superman, a hero who was not only godlike, but who drew huge inspiration from Greek god Hercules and biblical figures such as Samson and Moses. Lee searched for the perfect deity in ancient mythology. Early contenders were Mars, the Roman god of war, and Jupiter, the Greek god of the sky. However, Lee realised that readers were already pretty familiar with the Greek and Roman gods. Instead, he wanted someone more unknown. Finding that it might be fun to delve into the old Norse legends, Lee landed on Thor, the God of Thunder, a great benevolent warrior with insurmountable strength, the strongest of all the Norse gods. By his side, Thor carried the trusty hammer Mjolnir, which he used to battle his gigantic foes and summon colossal thunderstorms. Lee loved the idea of tackling this omnipotent being, finding himself drawn to the Viking-like depictions of the Norse gods, with their flowing beards, horned helmets and battle clubs. In fact, he especially liked the idea of the hammer, saying, What a weapon! Not a gun, it's not a knife, it's not a bomb. A hammer! I'm lucky it wasn't a screwdriver, it could have been a pair of pliers, but I think a hammer is really dramatic. While Lee makes it sound like he just happened upon the character, like many of his stories, this one is likely full of hyperbole and selective memory. Lee had, in fact, tackled Thor previously in three 1950 issues of Golden Age mythical anthology Venus. Briefly assisting the titular goddess of love in various plights, here Thor appeared in a generic appearance as a buff, middle-aged man with a golden beard. Looking more like a Greek god, he wore only a loincloth or a toga and was also sans hammer. 
Furthermore, Kirby, an ardent lover of mythology, had utilised the character in a 1957 issue of DC's Tales of the Unexpected. In Kirby's iteration, Thor appeared in a more traditional, Viking-like appearance, a larger-than-life apparition who visits Earth to retrieve his stolen hammer. It's likely, with a previous familiarity of the god, it actually didn't take the pair long to settle on Thor after all. Lee and Kirby's Thor was somewhat of an amalgamation of a Norse god and their famed superheroes. Metal armor, winged helmet, long flowing golden locks, hammer and the body of a legendary paragon, complemented by a spandex suit, billowing red cape and campy aesthetics. Kirby noted, I tried to update Thor and put him into a superhero costume. He was also a narrative fusion, retaining the more classical elements, his colossal strength and altruism, though with a more comic-y story. This meant, in the grand style of comic heroes, Marvel gave Thor an alter ego, adding that human element. In this case, they chose a lame American doctor named Donald Blake, who, while hiking in Norway, finds himself fleeing from alien stone men, losing his cane in the process. Taking refuge in a cave, Blake finds a large stick to use instead, though soon discovers when he strikes it against something, it transforms into a colossal hammer, bearing the inscription, Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. Blake is thus transformed into the mighty Thor, and putting his new powers to work, sends the invaders hurtling back to space. In true Marvel style, Lee also instilled Mjolnir with new powers, including the ability to boomerang back after being thrown, and the power of propulsion, giving Thor what Lee would call a real, scientifically sound method of flying. Thor wasn't immediately given his own headliner. Instead, Lee chose to debut him in an issue of flailing sci-fi monster anthology, Journey into Mystery, as a sort of tryout, a common method he successfully used to introduce a litany of Marvel's heroes. Penned by Larry Lieber, Lee's brother, and based on Lee's outline, Thor's short and simple origin was an instant hit when Journey into Mystery number 83 hit newsstands on June 5, 1962. Already announcing in the issue's final panel, Thor the Mighty, the greatest new superhero of all time, will appear regularly in Journey into Mystery, the team didn't need sales figures to know Thor would be a reader favourite. However, this risk did prove that the Marvel method could work successfully on the most generic of superheroes. With the very next issue, Blake was given an earthbound love interest in Jane Foster, a nurse at his clinic. Like all epic mythologies, it's a romance doomed to fail from the start, with Blake's interstellar duties as Thor preventing him from a normal life. However, when Foster develops feelings for Blake and Thor, a spellbinding, complex love triangle emerges. Lee considered the stories part Norse mythology and and part soap opera, blending mythology with humanity and delicious real-world drama. While making Blake a neurotic, bumbling man, Lee imbued the confident Thor with an extravagant rhythmical voice inspired by Shakespeare. Likewise, the overall voice of the comics was influenced by the writings of Edgar Allan Poe, Alexandra Dumas, and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Kirby's artwork likewise made Thor's stories unique. Author Matt Manning noted that his dynamic layouts and energetic storytelling gave Thor the sense of power and might that Lee had envisioned, while comic writer Walter Simonson, who would take over Thor in the 1980s, called Kirby the watershed visionary, who fashioned the world of the gods into a rich tapestry of visual fantasy. Kirby noted that he wanted to take the old legends and modernise them, something he said would be new for comics, and thus the series' mythology also rapidly expanded. Elements of Norse mythology were worked in, such as Thor's home, the realm of Asgard, and 
Asgard's Bifrost, a rainbow bridge connecting the universe's nine realms. Likewise, other Norse gods and legends were quickly introduced, including Thor's father Odin, his mother Frigga, his evil brother Loki, the god of mischief, Heimdall, guardian of the rainbow bridge, the warriors three, Balder the Brave, and Lady Sif. Likewise, mythological adversaries stooped in Nordic lore began to appear. Surtur the fire demon, the frost giants Ymir and Lofe, Hela the goddess of death, the enchantress, the executioner and the destroyer. Characters from other mythologies such as Greek gods Hercules and Zeus soon became recurring characters. All of these elements were further elaborated with the five-page Tales of Asgard backup story introduced in 1963's Journey into Mystery number 97, with Lee again capitalising on a proven theory that two stories would sell better than one. Tales became a long-running staple of the series, featuring stories of Thor's childhood and charting the Asgard-bound adventures of his contemporaries and modernising stories from Norse lore. With these embellishments, comics historian Les Daniels noted that Thor's adventures gradually transformed from stories about a strange looking superhero into a spectacular saga. It was Marvel's very first epic, with Thor's self-contained world expanding and extending instead of remaining confined within New York City. Simonson said the stories encompassed a sense of scale and grandeur that enlarged the adventures far beyond the confines of an ordinary comic book. In 1963, Thor also became a founding member of Marvel's first crossover super team, The Avengers, which teamed up all of their headliners. Lee noted that, to the team, Thor brought the necessary colour and contrast, as well as a fabulous sense of fantasy. After only a few issues, however, readers accustomed to Marvel's precise continuity began to question how Thor could assist The Avengers in monthly issues, while also in the middle of an epic Asgard set multi-issue arc in his own comic. To combat this, the entire Avengers roster was changed in 1965's issue number 16. Described as a revolutionary idea, a regularly rotating Avengers roster would soon become a long-running tradition. In 1964, Journey into Mystery was retitled Journey into Mystery with the Mighty Thor, representing the character's feature status. He took over as headliner in 1966, with the publication dropping Journey into Mystery from the title altogether. Very quickly, the Mighty Thor became one of Marvel's most popular heroes, so much so he was given his own segment on 1966's The Marvel Superheroes Show, an animated series produced by Grant Ray Lawrence Animation, featuring numerous seven-minute shorts focusing on different Marvel heroes. Utilising extremely limited animation and xerography, comic stories were literally translated from page to screen. Thor appeared in 13 cartoons throughout the series. Soon enough, Thor's stories had grown so large that readers also began questioning where he was between his childhood and his emergence as the alter ego of some random American doctor. Forced to make yet another major change, Marvel implemented what has been called one of the earliest examples of retcon in comics, when in 1968's Mighty Thor number 159, it was revealed that many years prior, after growing too arrogant, Odin had stripped him of his powers, wiped his memory, and banished him to Earth in the body of a doctor to learn humility. Only when he regained his worthiness could he rediscover his powers and learn the truth. Though Thor continued to lead a double life on Earth, Blake made fewer appearances after this revelation, not written out completely until the early 80s. By the late 1960s, however, Marvel jettisoned the Tales of Asgard in favour of full-length 20-page Thor stories, and soon after, Lee and Kirby left the title, handing over to fresh teams who continued the adventures. Most particularly, Simonson's run from 1983 to 1986 put an even heavier focus on Thor's mythical roots and cosmic adventures, notably introducing Beta Ray Bill, the first character, other than Thor, deemed 
worthy enough to wield Mjolnir. In the early 1980s, Thor made a pair of animated appearances in two limited animation Spider-Man series from Marvel Productions. Firstly, in a 1981 episode of Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. Here, Thor joined Spidey and pals in defeating Loki, who plans to wreak havoc on the Earth. As a fairly comic accurate series, Thor appeared in his traditional design. The episode sees Thor using his hammer in battle against various foes and teaming up with Viking warriors. It even features sequences on Asgard and a battle in the land of the Ice Giants. Then in a 1982 episode of Spider-Man, Donald Blake appeared in a very brief non-speaking role. Thor was set to star in his own animated series in the 1980s produced by Ruby Spears though this never eventuated. All that remains from this proposed series is a single piece of conceptual artwork produced by Kirby. In Disney's 1987 film, Adventures in Babysitting, Thor played a surprisingly important role. The film sees Elizabeth Shue's Chris taking care of a bunch of kids on a wacky journey through Chicago, one of which, Sarah, is an enormous fan of Thor, at one point calling him her hero. Sarah is seen throughout the film dressed as Thor, complete with helmet, cape and Mjolnir replica. One scene, however, sees the crew getting a broken tyre and visiting a mechanic, Dawson, played by Vincent D'Onofrio, who just so happens to resemble the mighty Thor. Sarah confuses Dawson for the real Thor, and even offers him her helmet, fearing he has lost his. While this obviously isn't the real Thor, it's technically the big screen debut of Marvel's character, particularly considering they officially licensed the character to Disney for use in the film. The real Thor, however, first appeared in 1988 NBC telemovie The Incredible Hulk Returns, a continuation of the late 1970s, early 1980s, Hulk series. Depicting the character in live action for the very first time, the movie saw Thor, portrayed by Eric Kramer, and Donald Blake, Steve Levitt, as two separate entities, with the Norse god becoming the Doctor's servant when he finds the enchanted hammer on a trip to Norway. Thor and Blake assist Dr. Banner, aka the Hulk, in taking down a crime ring, though not before battling it out in one of the best superhero fight scenes ever put to film. Here, Thor was depicted as more of a Viking, seeing him in warrior armour instead of his iconic superhero getup. Though with incredibly limited powers, and while not referred to as the God of Thunder, he does mention Odin. This tally movie was created as a backdoor pilot for a potential Thor series, though despite high ratings and good reception, this series never went into production. In the mid-1990s, Thor made appearances in New numerous Marvel Animated Universe series. He first showed up in a 1994 episode of X-Men in an incredibly brief cameo, reacting to Jean Grey's Phoenix Force during the Dark Phoenix Saga. Next, he appeared in a pair of 1995 Fantastic Four episodes, firstly enlisting the help of the team to help defeat Ego the Living Planet, and then briefly helping the team defeat Galactus. He then assisted Betty Ross in a 1996 episode of the Incredible Hulk, first enlisted as Donald Blake to cure a gamma virus, but then sent out to find a missing Hulk as the Mighty Thor. All set within the same continuity, Thor appeared in the same comic accurate design in all appearances. In the early 2000s, a Thor spin-off set in the animated universe was also planned, though likewise never eventuated. Between 1999 and 2000, Thor appeared in the opening sequence of Marvel and Saban's Avengers united they stand, though strangely never actually appeared during an episode. After issue number 502 in 1996, the Mighty Thor comic came to an end. The character, along with all the other major Marvel players, was rebooted under the Heroes Reborn banner, which under the thumbs of Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, reimagined the characters within a pocket universe, removing them from the main Marvel continuity for an entire year. On this counter-Earth, characters were given new contemporary origins, with Thor being found frozen in a block 
block of ice in Norway by scientist Donald Blake, and soon thawed out by the Avengers. This thaw was described as more brutal, temperamental and violent, a more literal translation from Norse mythology. Following this arc, all the Marvel heroes returned to the main continuity, and a second volume of The Mighty Thor reverting to issue number one began in mid-1998, once again depicting the character in his traditional iteration. Having run for 85 issues until 2004, the Thor comics returned for a third volume in 2007, putting yet another contemporary spin on the character, depicting him in a new full-body metal armour, going on to become one of his most iconic appearances. However, in 2002, Marvel launched their Ultimate Series, yet another reimagining of the Avengers series. Again, set in a new timeline, the Ultimate Universe, Thor was overhauled again, now seen as reincarnated on Earth in the body of Thorleif Goleman, who comes to realise his true identity after suffering a nervous breakdown. This more contemporary Thor, once again, takes cues from both the original iteration and Nordic mythology, stripping him of many of his powers and making him less reliant on Mjolnir. In 2006, the Ultimate comics were adapted into two direct-to-video features, Ultimate Avengers The Movie and Ultimate Avengers 2, which kicked off the Marvel Animated Features series. Produced in a limited digital animation with stylized angular design, these movies took a more mature tone similar to the DC animated originals, allowed to touch on darker, more controversial elements. A third Avengers feature, this time aimed towards a younger audience, Next Avengers Heroes of Tomorrow, was released in 2008, now focusing on a youthful team-up featuring the offspring of the original Avengers, including Toron Thorsdottir, the daughter of Thor and Sif. Elder versions of the Avengers make a brief appearance towards the end of the movie, helping the young team in their battle against Ultron. A more traditional Thor then appeared in 2009's Hulk vs Thor, once again pitting the God of Thunder against the Big Green Giant. This iteration of Thor then appeared in the 2010 Planet Hulk adaptation, battling alongside Beta Ray Bill in a flashback sequence. In 2011, Thor even got his very own film, Thor Tales of Asgard which, inspired by the original backup comic, focused on a young Thor on a mythical quest, learning how to prove himself worthy of his destiny along the way. Also in 2011, a four-part motion comic, Thor and Loki Blood Brothers, released. In this incredibly dark story, produced in limited CG animation with cell shading, Loki is ruling Asgard after leading a coup, during which he imprisons Thor. Told from Loki's point of view and spanning decades, Blood Brothers depicts younger, middle-aged and elderly versions of Thor. Between 2009 and 2011, Thor also made numerous appearances in Cartoon Network's Superhero Squad Show from Marvel Animation. A tie-in for the Hasbro toy line, this one was lighter in nature, depicting characters in cartoonish, super-deformed designs. A meta-action comedy parody, the series put a more satirical take on Thor and his mythos. The reason for such a plethora of Thor content in 2011 was, of course, to tie into his theatrical film debut, that year's Marvel Studios' Thor. As the character's entrance into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the movie took a more contemporary approach, doing away with the alter ego and instead presenting him as an alien banished to Earth by Odin to prove himself worthy of his role and his hammer. In this universe, the Asgardians are not depicted as literal gods, but beings that were once worshipped by ancient humans. Veteran thespian Kenneth Branagh was chosen to direct and brought his Shakespearean prowess to the mythology. Portrayed by Chris Hemsworth in his Hollywood big break, Thor falls for Jane Foster, Natalie Portman, finds himself the target of S.H.I.E.L.D. and once again proves himself worthy of the hammer, using it to battle the destroyer sent by Loki to destroy him. 
The brothers returned to the MCU the following year in 2012's The Avengers, where Thor joins the Earth's mightiest heroes after Loki leads an invasion on the planet. This again was followed swiftly by 2013's Thor The Dark World, which focused on the ramifications of Loki's attempted takeover of Earth and sees Thor and his brethren up against the Dark Elves. In 2015, Thor returned in Avengers Age of Ultron, again assisting the Avengers in a catastrophic battle against evil. Here, Thor was also used to help set up the MCU's first major arc, the Infinity Saga, as he visits a Norse cave and has visions of the Infinity Stones. These handful of appearances depicted Thor in an incredibly straight-laced, self-serious iteration. He took on a traditional appearance with bulging biceps and long blonde hair, while utilising the more contemporary riff on his classic armour. His first appearance also saw him with blonde eyebrows, though these were swiftly removed. With this approach, the character became one of the least interesting and least loved characters in the franchise. Hemsworth in particular found himself becoming bored of the role and felt Thor's potential for growth had become stunted. Because of this, Thor was given a total overhaul, with comedic director Taika Waititi taking the reins of the character for his third solo film, 2017's Thor Ragnarok. In a total departure, Thor was made brighter, livelier, funnier and more relatable, basically a parody of himself and his inherently goofy mythology. He was placed in a more slimline battle armour and given a fresh, clean haircut. Additionally, ridding him of another classic element, the film saw the destruction of Mjolnir. While this was a whiplash divergence, audiences quickly fell in love with this version, turning him into one of the franchise's most beloved characters and cementing his continuance in the MCU. As part of Ragnarok's marketing campaign, Marvel released a pair of Team Thor one-shot films. These short comedic mockumentaries, which are non-canon to the MCU, feature Thor living domestically on Earth. Written and directed by Waititi prior to the filming of Ragnarok, the shorts were released to prime audiences for the upcoming tonal shift of the character, giving them an idea of what they could expect from the movie. The new Thor was once again utilised in 2018's Avengers Infinity War, where he heads out on a quest to build a new hammer, debuting the Stormbreaker, and again a new armour, on the battlegrounds of Wakanda, as he once again joins the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy to take on Thanos. Going against the Mad Titan head-on, Thor makes a gigantic mistake that unequivocally leads to the Avengers' defeat. Returning in 2019's Avengers Endgame, upon release the highest grossing movie of all time, Thor was given some serious character development, as he's seen in the midst of a nervous breakdown, having given up on his duties and let himself go. In a depiction that's affectionately referred to as Fat Thor, Thor is seen over weight, with scraggly hair, a filthy beard and wearing old, dirty tracksuits. As Thor discovers his self-worth, he once more joins the fight in a new, contemporary Viking-inspired armour. Throughout this time, Thor also made various appearances in the new Marvel Animated Universe on Disney XD. Designed to capitalise on the popularity of the MCU in its infancy, this universe acted as an animated equivalent, featuring interconnected stories and series, while utilising similar characterisations to the movies. While a Thor series had been planned to coincide with the first movie, this once again fell through, with Thor's first appearance instead being a regular in 2010 to 2012's Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. As Thor hadn't debuted in the MCU just yet, Mightiest Heroes depicted him in a more contemporary, bulky, stylized design, utilizing concepts devised for the proposed solo series. Thor then appeared in a few episodes of Ultimate Spider-Man between 2012 and 2013, helping the Spidey gang on a couple of missions. Releasing just after the original Thor movie, he now took on a more MCU accurate design, though retained a slightly stylized shape. In one episode, Thor was transformed into Throg, a frog version of himself, 
and in another he was transformed into a babyfied chibi design. The ultimate Spidey version of Thor then transferred into the 2013 to 2019 Avengers Assemble series as a regular, though appeared even less stylized. This series also saw the appearance of Old Thor when the Avengers travel into the 30th century. Additionally, Jane Foster appears taking on the mantle of an alternate Thor, Thunderstrike. This was of course inspired by the then concurrent series of Thor comics, which saw Foster taking the mantle of Thor after he becomes unworthy. This celebrated run by Jason Aaron ran between 2012 and 2020 across numerous volumes and spin-offs, introducing various alternate Thors along the way. In 2013's Phineas and Ferb parody special Mission Marvel, a slightly more cartoony and comical version of the Avengers Assemble Thor appeared alongside the Avengers. Likewise, in 2013 to 2015's Hulk and the Agents of Smash, he made half a dozen appearances, assisting the Hulks on their various journeys. And furthermore, in 2015 to 2019's Guardians of the Galaxy, he remained a regularly recurring guest star, taking part in numerous cosmic adventures. Following the conclusion of the XD Universe, Thor guest starred in a pair of episodes of Marvel's Spider-Man in 2020, firstly in a venomized form and then as a member of the Avengers. Though disconnected to the XD Universe, this series also took cues from MCU iterations of characters, depicting Thor in his revamped post-Ragnarok design. Prior to this, he appeared in 10 episodes of Disney Junior's Marvel Superhero Adventures, an educational comedy series, this time in a super stylized comic inspired design. Likewise, Thor also appeared in a series of MCU inspired Lego Marvel Superheroes short films, including 2013's Maximum Overload and 2015's Avengers Reassembled in his original MCU design, 2017's Guardians of the Galaxy Thanos Threat cameoing in his Avengers Age of Ultron design, and then in 2018's Black Panther Trouble in Wakanda, cameoing in his Avengers Infinity War design. He additionally appeared in numerous anime productions, including 2012 direct-to-video movie Avengers Confidential Black Widow and Punisher, where he appears alongside the Avengers in a semi-MCU inspired design, 2014 to 2015 series Marvel Disc Wars The Avengers, in a heavily stylized mega bulky manga inspired design, and in 2017 to 2020 series Marvel Future Avengers, in a similarly stylized but more western inspired inspired design. In 2021, Thor also appeared in MCU set animated series What If? In this alt-reality series, he starred in the episode What If Thor Were an Only Child, which depicts him as an out-of-control, unheroic party bro who goes head-to-head -head with Captain Marvel when S.H.I.E.L.D. attempts to put a stop to his destructiveness. He also appeared in the series finale where he teams up with the alt-universe super team, the Guardians of the Multiverse. In 2022, Thor returned to the MCU in Thor Love and Thunder. Based heavily on Aaron's run, the film saw Thor up against Gore the God Butcher, this time with the help of the newly worthy Foster, now taking on the mantle of the mighty Thor. Under the watch of Waititi, Thor is once again depicted in his slimmer, contemporary, somewhat goofy style, this time round in a selection of over-the-top colourful armours. Over time, Thor has appeared in thousands of comic issues, spanning half a dozen core volumes and nearly 70 spin-offs, limited series and one-shot issues. Additionally, he has appeared in numerous team lineups, having appeared in every single volume of The Avengers since its inception. With Thor remaining popular in both comics and extended visual media, his worthiness will prevail well into the future. And at that, I'm throwing it over to you. I want to know, what is your favourite Thor appearance or iteration? Fire away down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. If you want to check out more evolutions, you can find them linked on your screen. Also, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching.